It is 2 p.m. Central Time along the U.S. Central Gulf Coast on this Sunday, June 24th, and this is your 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app update on Tropical Storm Debbie. I am very thankful that we posted a special video update earlier this morning as the track of Tropical Storm Debbie has indeed shifted toward the north. As you can see, the latest update from the Hurricane Center is taking Debbie towards southeast Louisiana and making landfall as a minimal hurricane between Wednesday evening and Thursday morning and the governor of Louisiana has issued a state of emergency and this is for a good reason because of course Louisiana is very vulnerable to tropical cyclones and they need as much preparation time as possible. However with all that being said there is still a good probability that the track will continue to shift and if anything it could be a little bit more toward the east over the next 24 hours. As a result, the National Hurricane Center has had to extend their tropical storm warnings all the way to the Florida Big Bend region. Tropical Storm Debbie remains somewhat disorganized on the latest satellite imagery, and this is still a result of this upper level low located over the northwest gulf. It is continuing to induce southwest vertical wind shear, and that is why all of the convection is lopsided toward the north and east of the center. And as we take a look at the visible, you can see that the low-level circulation is still somewhat exposed and the convection is continuing to try and pull the center of circulation closer toward the Florida Panhandle. Therefore, there is a greater likelihood that the storm could very well make landfall across the Florida Panhandle sometime within the next 48 hours. And this is what half of the latest dynamical model solutions are indicating. However, there is still the outside chance that this upper-level trough over the eastern United States does not pick up the low-level circulation. This would be bad news because that would entail more nearly stationary movement over the next 72 to 96 hours, which would result in potentially more dangerous flooding across the eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico. Here is a look at the trough over the eastern United States and we can see the reinforcing shot moving into the Great Lakes and with the more northerly motion of Tropical Storm Debbie continuing over the past 36 hours it is becoming more likely that this trough will be able to capture the storm however just like the Texas scenario we cannot guarantee that this storm is going to quickly move into Florida in fact there is still some of the models indicating that this mid-level ridge over the central plains could still build east over the next 72 hours and if it builds quick enough it could still linger Tropical Storm Debbie somewhere near the Florida Panhandle for an extended period. Here is the latest five-day precipitation forecast and we see another significant bullseye of nearly 16 inches progged to the south of Dolphin Island, Alabama and we see significant rainfall totals forecast for the entire western coast of Florida and this could still change depending on any alterations in the forecast track. The latest regional radar confirms that much of the Sunshine State is not so sunny today with nothing but heavy rainfall across much of the state of Florida and as we work our way closer to Apalachicola we are even beginning to receive reports of tropical storm force winds and some wind related wind damage and we're talking about trees being blown down and reports of power poles snapped or at least lying across the roadways. The following is the latest velocity wind product from the Tallahassee radar site and some of the pink colors are denoting areas of 60 knots or higher winds at 850 millibars which is 5,000 feet and a basic conversion would tell us that we could see wind gusts in excess of 50 to 60 miles per hour near the surface in some of these stronger storms that move along the coastline. Down towards central and south Florida we have already received multiple wind and tornado reports this afternoon and a new tornado watch encompasses much of the state including Fort Myers, Tampa and just to the west of Orlando, Florida. The latest 0 to 1 kilometer helicity values, which is simply a measure of the vertical wind shear in the lowest layers of the atmosphere, is showing some rather high vertical wind shear, so the tornado threat will continue for at least the next 24 to 48 hours. This is the latest forecast from the GFS model, and keep in mind the GFS has been by far the most consistent and accurate with Tropical Storm Debbie thus far and it is continuing to show a more northeasterly track with it crossing Florida over the next 48 hours and then moving away out across the western Atlantic. Other models including the Canadian CMC are also trending in this direction and as you can see this latest run is also very similar to the GFS and it shows a landfall near Apalachicola before moving into the west Atlantic over the next couple of days. However with all this being said we still do not have a very good model consensus and you will see this beginning with the 12Z run of the UK Met model and it is somewhat similar with the track but the timing is much slower 
and this is now looking into the 48 hour forecast period so by Tuesday morning the storm is still expected to be just to the south of Panama City Florida and even by 72 hours it is just now finally beginning to move into the Big Bend but even with this track forecast you can see that the mid-level ridge is trying to build back toward the east over the Tennessee and Ohio valleys and finally the latest run of the ECMWF model is still trying to play catch up as you may remember 24 hours ago it was indicating a Texas landfall and now the most recent run is showing a very slow motion in fact the storm is going to be nearly stationary if you take this model verbatim over the next 48 to 72 hours finally between days 3 and 4 it looks to make landfall somewhere near Panama City or Destin Florida but if the storm does indeed take this long to move inland, this is going to provide enough time for the central United States ridge to prograde toward the east and build back over the Tennessee and Ohio Valley. So instead of the storm moving fully out to sea, it becomes captured by the ridge at the last second and it moves more toward the north into central Mississippi and Alabama. And as you can see, the model continues to show the storm or remnants of the storm moving about across the southeast United States, which would raise the concern for flooding. So it will be the state of Florida receiving the full brunt of Tropical Storm Debbie over the next two days as the eastern side of the storm is definitely where the most active weather is located. Again, the western semicircle of the storm is still battling a lot of vertical wind shear. And we very well could be dealing with a landfall somewhere across the central or eastern half of the Florida Panhandle within the next 48 to 60 hours. But even with that said, we cannot rule out the storm being left behind by the trough, and there is still that chance that the ridge can capture it within the next 72 to 96 hours. If that were to happen, then we could be talking about a little bit more of a westerly turn at the last second, which would bring more heavy rainfall as far west as southeast Louisiana, and definitely into Mississippi and Alabama. Of course, the National Hurricane Center will keep you up to date as far as any important information that you may need to be aware of, so definitely keep up with the official sources there. And of course, you can always follow us at 28storms.com or our Facebook and Twitter widgets. And we've also added the Tropical Storm Debbie Landfall page, where you can find a lot of extensive information not only about the storm, but a lot of emergency-related information on a county-to-county -county basis.